Hi, I'm Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and welcome to the stunning city of Boulder, Colorado. I am absolutely in love with this city. I cannot tell you how much fun I've had the past five days. This video is everything that you need to know before you come to the city. If you're new here, I put out laid back luxury travel videos inspiring you to go hike the flat irons. Make sure to subscribe. That's the red button below. Give this video a thumbs up and ring that notification bell because you don't want to miss an episode. Let's start with where Boulder is located. It is located about a 45 minute drive from the Denver airport. You can use tolls or not tolls. It's pretty easy to get up here. The best time of year to come? Well, that depends on what you're looking for. Right now it's July, it's 90 degrees, but it cools off in the evening. I think summer is a great time to be here. Then again, fall with the changing colors of the leaves or in the spring when it starts to warm up is also perfect. And if you're a winter person, definitely come up here for the skiing. What is unique about Boulder is there are 300 days a year of sunshine. That makes me super happy. I am a sunshine person, even in the winter. The average temperatures are sort of 70s in the spring, 60s in the fall. Right now it's 92, so it's a little sweaty. And in the winters, lows of 25 and highs of 40. Of the 105,000 people here, there are 95,000 bicycles. Everybody bikes, everybody hikes. You're definitely going to need a car when you come here. I haven't seen a lot of public transportation. And if you want to get around to all the hiking spots, as well as all of the vistas and all of the restaurants and things to do, you're definitely going to need a car. So how many days should you stay in Boulder? Well, I think you should stay a month. I would like to stay a month, but honestly, you can do everything that you wanna do in about four days. So take a long weekend and come here. There are lots and lots of hotels, but I haven't seen a lot of boutique or luxury hotels. I stayed at one of the old residence inn and it was perfect. The best part about the residence inn is having a kitchen and a dishwasher and a refrigerator because when you're going hiking, you're packing in your lunch every day. There are some great Airbnbs here as well and if you are looking to be near the action then you want to stay as close as possible to Pearl Street so you can walk to all the restaurants rooftop bars and do all of your shopping so if you're interested in some of the hotel suggestions I have left some links in the description below of some good choices that are close to the action and have great prices and great rooms so a little history about Boulder Valley and Boulder in general. Originally, it was a gathering area of primarily the Arapaho Native Americans. In 1859, this city was established and it was actually part of the Nebraska Territory. So as soon as Colorado became a territory, Boulder moved over to Colorado. And as you are aware today, Boulder is located in Northern Colorado. Boulder is known for being a very educated city. The university was established here in 1874. That beautiful red rock, oh, those, those buildings are just spectacular. When you come visit, you have to go see the University of Colorado at Boulder. Speaking of everything that you need to do, I have a top 10 list of everything that you need to do while you're in Boulder, so make sure to check out that video as well. And if you're coming to Boulder for three or four days and you're not sure what to do, you can go to the description below. I have a free guide that is the perfect three-day itinerary to Boulder. As I mentioned, there are about 105,000 people that live here and 30,000 students at the University of Colorado at Boulder. It is a very young, active population. In fact, the average age here is 29 years old. Everybody I've seen has been young and vibrant. Even if they're older, older like me, I'm 51, they are active, going out. They are having fun with friends, big groups of tables of people. I've seen groups hiking, everybody's biking, everybody's outside, enjoying each other's company. It's a very lively city. It's very vibrant. And you know, one thing that I've noticed Noticed is everybody is super friendly. They're genuinely kind here from the servers, the wait staff, the bartenders, people walking down the street when I was asking directions, people standing in line. Everybody has been super spectacular. And National Geographic said that it is the happiest city in the United States. Who knew? Not only is it young and vibrant, there are people like me that are a little bit older. It's also very educated, as I mentioned before. Did you know there are more used bookstores here in Boulder than anywhere else in the US? It's pretty crazy. 
So what to pack while you're staying in Boulder? I definitely recommend that you bring layers. Yes, it's 92 degrees right now. However, this evening it'll be nice and cool. So I always recommend when you're coming to a mountain town, even though it's only 5,600 feet, you still have the mountain weather. You need some shirts, you need a couple of jackets, and in summer specifically, you never know when you're gonna get a rainstorm, so bring a rain jacket. Most of the time I've been here, I've worn shorts or short skirts. I did wear some leggings and a pair of jeans one night because it was a little bit cooler. Now this is summer, these are my summer suggestions. In the fall and in the spring, you're definitely gonna have to bring more jackets, more vests, and my favorite thing to wear when I'm cold, but it's not too cold, is just one of those down vests that you can get at Patagonia. Additionally, a couple of extra things that you need to bring in your bag when you come to Boulder. Sunscreen. You are up in the mountains, you are going to get burned. The other thing that you need to bring is bug spray. There are biting flies and mosquitoes everywhere up here in the mountains. I have been attacked like nobody's business. I must be super, super sweet. So I would say that Boulder is relatively casual. Most of the time, everybody is in shorts, some type of hiking gear. Most everybody I've seen is in Birkenstocks and I have worn my Birkenstocks every day, including going to some of the nice restaurants like Jack's in the Kitchen. Boulder is a foodie town. It is a lively town. It is a very social town. You definitely want to be going out in the evening, so don't spend too much time hiking during the day. In and around Boulder, there are some great sights to see. You can go to Rocky Mountain National Park, you can go to Estes Park, go to Longmont, or make a day trip back to Denver if you'd like. Since Boulder is such a foodie town, I have a couple of highlights for you that I found delicious. The Kitchen is number one, Jack's is number two, and Lucille's for breakfast. If you're looking for a rooftop bar that I thought was fantastic, I really enjoyed going to Rosetta Hall, which was a food hall, and a rooftop bar with day beds, great tables and chairs, and a nice bar upstairs overlooking the entire valley. Well, that sums up my know before you go to Boulder, Colorado. I promise you're gonna wanna stay, you're gonna wanna come back, and you're gonna be exhausted, happily exhausted when you go home from all the hiking and good food. Make sure to leave a comment below of any additional tips that you have for me or other people going to Boulder, Colorado. I really love reading all of the comments. I am Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and I'll see you very soon in Boulder. I'll be back very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Take care, y'all. See you soon.